and to honor you, Father. We know that, that you love us and we love you as well. This is an opportunity to, to mature spiritually. We ask that you open our ears and our minds and prepare us to learn and learn about you and, and your son, Father, Jesus Christ, who died for our sins, Father, who, who took our place and from a sin and, and took sin upon himself and, and your, your wrath upon himself, Father. We thank you and we honor you, Father, and, and we love you, Father. Thank you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, so we're going to continue in second period. I think we're going to finish uh, in the next couple of weeks. I want to make an attempt to try to get through this one pretty quickly. So I think we'll get done in the next couple of weeks. Um, uh, we're going to finish Chapter 1 today and and maybe Chapter 2 of uh, Second Peter. You know, in, in Second Peter, what we said last week, is in, in this book, Peter continue, continues to urge his readers and, and us today to continue the uh, spiritual growth to understand what really we received through salvation that came through Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. We, we need to really begin to, we need to study, we need to grow, and we need to discern really what we receive. But we receive great benefits. If, yes, we receive eternal life, but we receive a lot more than that uh, uh, through the salvation of Jesus Christ. Because we, we are, God blesses us in many, many ways. But it, and it, he provides those blessings of people that have been, in people that have been saved through the death, burial, and resurrection of his, his son. Uh, yeah, but the Bible tells us we're joined heirs with Christ. So if Christ is the Son of God and is God, and has all of this, right? We're joint heirs with him. So just think, if you wrap your head around it, just think of all of the things that, that we have as a result of Jesus' sacrifice. Uh, sacrifice. Well, Peter wants us to continue to grow and really understand all of those benefits, even in the midst of of our being perhaps persecuted, right? Uh, and the, the reason we were able to deal with persecution is because we've been saved, and we have we have uh, uh, we have the presence of God with us. It's in us, as you know, the the Holy Spirit is dwells in us. We have. And we know the fact that God loves us. We know the fact that God is a creator. Every good and perfect gift comes from God. He knows everything. He's in control of everything. So if that's the case and we're his children, then we can deal with, we don't, I didn't say enjoy. We can deal with what happens, what happens to us, right? But we need, but in order to do that, we need to know more and more and more we need to grow, right? But at the same time, we know we have an enemy or enemies, uh, and we have an enemy that use, will use anything and anybody to, 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 so that we don't know. Once we're saved, we're saved. That's, that's done. Right? But so to keep us from enjoying all our benefits, we are attacked on all sides. Persecution is one of those things. Uh, false teaching is another, another thing, and that's what Peter really kind of talks about in Second Peter, in this book that we're reading in this letter today. So he's writing to them, uh, 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 and so we need to beware of those who want to stop and go, and we want to continue to grow and to uh, to advance. Uh, and I would, what we what we chose as a, a key scripture for this this study is Second Peter chapter three, verses seventeen, eighteen. John, if you read that. Second Peter three, seventeen and eighteen. Therefore, knowing this beforehand, be on your guard that being carried away by the error of unprincipled men, you fall from your own steadfastness. But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory from now to the day of eternity. Okay, so Peter said two things in here in this, in this key scripture. One, be forewarned, be aware, 
And then the last part says, but, but grow. Beware, but continue to grow. So, so uh, last week in our introduction, uh, Pete, you know, we saw that Peter was exhorting the believers to grow in Christ, grow, grow in Christian verse. Exhort, but exhorted believers to grow in Christian verses. You remember what those verses were? Mm-hmm. There were some verses. There were some, some, some Christian verses that Peter encouraged uh, his readers and us that we needed to grow in. You remember those? Uh, yeah. Remember what they were? Mm-hmm. Huh? Mm-hmm. No. Mm-hmm. Right, right, right. But remember there were verses, and I'm trying to, I'm, I'm trying to start because I want, I want, want to make sure we got them all. Uh, remember what they were? You remember faith? Oh, you mean faith? Uh huh. Knowledge, virtue, knowledge, self-control, perseverance. Right, right. So if so, right. So really, if you, if you read the 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 fruit of the spirit, those are it's essentially all the verses that we should that the peer was exhorting. We need to grow in those uh, so that we can really understand and discern what's going on in terms of our in terms of those that would uh, attack us. So so. Remember, Peter, in writing these things, he said that, you know, really said that I told you about this stuff before, but I'm writing this letter to you to remind you. Read, read um, um, Jewel, 1 Peter 1, 12 through 14. Oh, no. Oh, I'm sorry, 2 Peter 1, 12 through 14. 2 Peter 12, 1 through 14. Because Peter's saying, I already told you this, guys, yeah. but, I, but I want to remind you. 2 Peter 1, 12 through 13. For this reason, I will not be negligent to remind you always of these things. So you know that I established in the present truth. Yes, I think it is right, as long as I am in this tent, to stir you up by reminding you. Knowing that shortly I must put off my tent, just as our Lord Jesus Christ showed me. Moreover, I will be careful to ensure that you always have a reminder of these things after my Okay, all right. So two things. One, he wanted to remind him, because Peter knew that he wasn't going to be around much longer. He said, I need to remind you that I'm not going to be around much longer, so, but so it's important that I need to remind you about the stuff you already know, right? You already know these truths, but to emphasize the, the, the need to constantly be alert and grow. You already know this, but you need to continue to grow and be alert of, 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 of the, 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 uh, the enemy, Look, be alert of false teaching and false doctrine, because you don't get complacent. I don't, you already know this, but let's not get complacent. Yeah, you know, but let's not get complacent because, you know, if you get complacent, you can be overcome sometimes, right? If we get, if we get complacent in, in the things that we do, I know, already know, you can put laid back, I already know this, I don't need to study, I don't need to do this, especially, if, and I'm noticing now as I get older, if I don't continue to study and, and study and, 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 and advance uh, because I already know, I forget, right? So I need to constantly reinforce that. And that's what Peter's saying. I need to remind you of this. I'm not going to be around. I am not going to be around anymore to help you with this. You need to beware and study yourself for yourself. But I want to remind you. I'm, I'm telling you this now. Remember, you already know this. Uh, but continue to do this to because you can reinforce what already knowing, right? Because I'm not going to be around much. Uh, and now, here's what Peter does. Peter says, listen to me, because one of my, I'm an apostle, and I was actually with Jesus Christ, and I actually saw his glorification. James, read uh, text. Second Peter chapter one verses fifteen through eighteen. And I will make every effort to see that after my departure you will always be able to remember these things. For we do not follow clever, cleverly devised stories when, when told, 
when we told you about the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ in power, when we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. He received honor and glory from God the Father when the voice came to him through the majestic glory, saying, <laughs> This is my son whom I love, and with him I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice that came from heaven when we were with him on the sacred mountain. Okay, so he's saying, listen, well, listen to what I'm telling you. I'm not just telling you what I heard. I was an eyewitness of this. So listen, listen to me. Be, listen to me. I was an eyewitness. I'm, this is not hearsay. I was an eyewitness of this, right? I heard, I heard the voice from, I heard God the Father saying, listen to my son because I'm pleasing him. So, so it's important for me to remind you of, of the fact that you are receive salvation through Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and God was well pleased with this. This is not hearsay. I actually heard it and saw it. So listen to me. Be sure you listen to me. So, so, so. Now, now remember this. He's saying I heard a bunch of stuff. And listen to this. You need you need to study what you know, but uh, study what you have have already heard. All they had heard was is stuff from the apostles or in reading the Old Testament, right? So but Paul, so Paul is saying that, that make, make sure you understand all of this and study this, and because it's important because what you hear me saying and what you heard the prophet saying, what you've seen written was not just like, just like we were eyewitnesses. This was not from them. Or this was inspired by God, right? This is five. It's not. This is not. A, this is not my opinion. It's not the opinion of the folk that wrote this stuff. It's not the opinion of the apostles. This is not hearsay. Huh? It's not hearsay. Right? Not hearsay. This is from God. Right? Don't. So so look. Just look at it that way, so you can contrast really uh, 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 opinion. From eyewitness, right? This if you go in the go to court, I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'll watch some court on TV, <laughs> right? But but eyewitness testimony has more credibility than so. As a matter of fact, people object when it's something somebody's heard, and and quite often the judge says sustains sustains it just because it's hearsay. It's hearsay. It could be anything, right? Yes, you. Oh man, thank God, Pastor. What you are teaching us right now. Well, I know the basics, and on the bus, um, I explained to her the same thing. Father, well, people talking about, you know, this and that, and people heard voices and all this and that. She was a Jewish lady. She listened to everything. Then finally said, no, I don't believe you. I said, well, why? She said, well, I, I don't know. So I said, nothing has came to me. It's because of tradition. Your grandparents, your parents were Jewish, and they taught you this, and that's why you don't believe them. You're right. Oh, that's a good point. That's, that's, a good, that's a good point, and it can work either way. Tradition, tradition is important. It's significant. Mm-hmm. Tradition is important. Uh, but, but what you need, you need more than that. You need, you need something to stand on so that you can, you can be confident have confidence in the tradition that you receive. So that's a good point. Tradition, tradition could, could, could cause you not to believe, right? Uh, or con- tradition, tradition could cause you to believe, but, in, but, but you need to make sure that that tradition is based on something. You, know, you can have traditional stuff, but if it ain't based on anything, it's worthless. And what Peter said, look, I'm an eyewitness here, right? And you you read all this stuff, but I want to assure you, one is an eyewitness that, that I saw it, and number two, that everything you read that has become a part of what you do was inspired by God. Read read uh, Jeanette, Second Peter chapter one, verses nineteen through twenty one. And so we have the prophet. So we have the prophetic word confirm what you do will to heed as a light that shines in dark place. 
until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your heart. Knowing the first that no prophecy of scripture is any private interpretation. For the prophecy never came by the will of man, but the holy men of God, both of them moved by the Holy Spirit. Between one. Okay. I, 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 so what are you saying then is is it uh the stuff you read is good, but I want you to understand that this this didn't come from this guy who wrote this, right? It was inspired by the Holy Spirit. It, the, the, the origin of this stuff wasn't from this guy's mind, but from God. It was what this person was saying actually came from God, right? So you can count on it. Just like you can count on what I'm telling you, because I, I'm a, I'm a witness. So what Peter was affirming uh, was the, the divine inspiration of Scripture and emphasizing that it's reliable and trustworthy, right? Now, uh, so what he's saying, you need to pay attention to God's Word. Same thing, and all they had was the old stuff, right? And boy, we've got the Old Testament and the New Testament, so for, so it's important for us to understand that this this that was inspired. Everything we've read was inspired by God. Even the bad stuff was inspired. It was God inspired somebody to write it down. The lie, there are some lies in the Bible that people told, but that's because God inspired the writer because he had a point to write it to record it. It wasn't out off the top of his head, right? And and you, so we need to pay attention to God's word because that's what people. That, that's the same way. We need to grow. We need and continue to exercise. Just, just like physical exercise builds up a strength, spiritual growth requires constant uh, constancy, consistency, and practice. In order for us to grow, we've got to be consistent. And we've got to study. I'll use the word study. We've got to we've got to be consistent in our study in order to grow, right? Uh, also, we need to pay attention because attention is, is crucial to evaluate. Because we're going to be talking about this in a minute. It's crucial to be able to evaluate what you hear, right, against the authoritative word of God. That's called discernment. We got to discern, right? The, the, and evaluate, it's crucial. We got to discern what we hear and are we taught with what the Word of God says. But we've already determined it's authority, the authority of God's Word. Okay? But we can be confident in God's in, in Scripture. The Bible is not merely, it's not just a book. Right? It's a living and active document inspired by God. So it's more than just a book. It's just a book, but it's more than just that. And 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 if we if we grow and we study and and have the confidence of God's word, then we're confident in sharing that with other people. So that's the reason we need really need to pay attention to God's word. All right. So so that the two. So now now let's get into some significance. There's two things Peter talks about. In this book, uh, two, there are two kinds of evil that we have to deal with that Peter talks about. And we, we've already said these are the last days, right? In my, my definition of the last days were the, they, they started, right, when Jesus went back to heaven, right? After everything after that is the last days, as far as I'm concerned. Okay, all right. Oh, so, so we have to, there's two kinds of evil we've got to deal with in the, in the last days. And they, they, that one, is deceptive teaching, a false teaching, right? Uh, and the other evil, and the other evil comes from that, is the disbelief that comes because we, we, become, we, because we become skeptical because of what we hear. Two things. We, 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 the, the, the teaching themselves and the skepticism that comes from, and disbelief, that comes from listening to that, right? And the skepticism that I'm talking about, going to talk about, and that Peter talks about, is, is, is I said the last day started when, in my, in my definition, when Christ, how, many, how long has that been? Uh, 
long, long time, right? Okay, so, 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 if we we can be led astray by false teaching, would make you become skeptical as to whether Christ is going to come back or not. Even based on what, you, and and that's why we need to understand and study and continue to grow in the Word of God, right? So, 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 so we're going we're going we're going to deal we're going to deal today with with uh, Peter's warning against false teachers, right? He warns us against teachers, the teachers that, that promote doctrines that are contrary to the Word of God and the apostles' teachings, right? This predecessor, right? right? He, 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 so, so we gotta, we gotta, we gotta, this discernment is very important. We gotta understand, so that way we, we know the difference, right? We already know that we already know we've already listed the virtues that we need for spiritual growth, right? Faith, knowledge, self-control, perseverance, uh, godliness, kindness, love, right? We already know that, right? All right. Now, okay. So, so I want to get us now to hear of some of the elements for that growth. Right? Here are some of the elements for that growth. So if we something need that we need that to allow us to develop those virtues. Okay. Mm-hmm. One first is prayer. It's constant, constant communication with God. Second is what what we're doing today, Bible study, right? Right. Uh, so we so because the Bible study the Bible uh, word that provides us uh, understanding and nourishment, right? If we do it right. So we got prayer, and these are elements of elements for the growth of these verses. Prayer, Bible study, worship, participating in worship, and 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 I'm I'm saying participation in corporate worship. Yes, we can worship as individuals, and we should. But but part of this whole thing, one of the reasons we were able to 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 deal with persecution and tribulation and troubles. Is we're part of a community, right? Remember what we said last: we're not we're not the lone ranger. We're not by ourselves. Other people, there are other people that are going through this kind of stuff and have been that can help us, right? Help us to develop these virtues. And then the last thing is then another thing we're doing today, and that's demonstrating the love of God through service. Okay, those are factors. Those are those are some factors and some other factors, right? Uh, 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 um, stewardship is another factor, right? Okay, managing whatever resources we have wisely is a reflection of thanks to God, right? God gave me whatever I have. What God gave this to me, every good and perfect gift comes to God. Whatever I have. Can, is a gift from God, and so I need to be a man. I need to manage it, whatever it is. If it's a dollar or if it's ten million dollars, I need to manage this because it's a gift from God. If we look back at at, at Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve were given as a gift the Garden of Eden. That's just limited to the Garden of Eden. But in order to enjoy it. They had to manage it. They had to take care of it. They had to be a steward of what God gave them, right? So, so we need that part. That's one of the things that help us to grow in these virtues that we have, right? And so, the word, the virtues, the virtues as we develop them, uh, we talked about this a couple of times. End up, we end up, and end up developing and uh, uh, and being able to exhibit. The fruit of Let's read, just read that. It's Galatians 5. What's Galatians 5, whatever. I can't remember. Yes. Okay. Um, Question first. How do we discern what is a gift from God versus what is um, a counterfeit? Uh, uh, well, our own. Ah, okay, 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 our okay. Our own desires. Like okay, that. okay. Well, I, I, I think what we, I think what we, I think. What we have to understand is, if, if it's, one, if it's a good gift, it's from God, right? If it's not good, it may not be. It's probably not from God, but right? uh, and 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 
Because your question was, how do we discern whether it's a gift of God or whether it's a desire that we have? Maybe I don't want to quite understand the question. Yeah, that's it. That's okay. Um, I, I had a discussion with someone. Okay, yeah, that'll help. Yeah. Who, um, uh, it, it was a family member, and um, he was um, kind of touting the, um, the benefits of, of wealth and, you know, big house and yeah. saying, well, you know, this is a gift from God. If right. you don't have it, it's a gift. Right. It's a gift from him. Right. You know? um, God doesn't necessarily just want me to have a car. He wants me to have a. <laughs> okay. Have okay. A All right. All right. You know, um, a, a lot of um, my um, skepticism in the past about um, and my limited experience with clergy was um, that um, big fancy Cadillacs were for pastors. And. Um, you know, and saying, well, you know, it wasn't until um, I saw humility in, in, in clergy um, such as yourself that um, I, I really started, uh, you know, really started trusting because it was, um, you know, there was there so much, um, you know, uh, uh, corrupt little dollar. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. 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 Well, let, let me try to answer that. Um, God, when he gives a gift, does not take it back. Whatever it is. Right? Okay. So, and every good, we would say that every good and perfect gift comes from God. Right? God gives it. God gives you direction as how you should use this gift I'm giving you. He does not force you to use the gift the way that he want, would like want you to give. God gives you a gift so that you can then share that gift and be a manager of that gift to the rest, to others, right? Whether you do that or not is your decision. He leaves that up to you. He gives you his word, which says, here's what I... I love everybody, and you're supposed to love everybody. That's what it, that's what the word says. But whether you do that or not, it's up to you. Now, and people have a problem with that, right? People have a problem with it uh, because uh, because you, God gives you a, a million dollar a big house, right? Right? And you don't decide that I'm not going to share it. That's fine, but you, but the use of all of that. It's only, it's temporary. That's why I said we have to, we need to, our perspective also has part of all of this thing is our perspective needs to change. There's nothing wrong with wealth. As a matter of fact, I wish that I had more wealth. I, would, I, I pray that God would give me more wealth because I believe, I believe that I would share it. I pray that I would, that I would, that, that I would share it. Now, uh, but some people don't. So, 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 the gift comes from God, right? That the, the 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 management of that gift is left up to us. Does that, Does that help? Think back to Scripture that says um, a rich man um, has as much of a chance of getting to heaven as a, a camel through the eye of a needle, right? You know. Um, so I, you know, I wonder whether it's, you know, um, in God's interest for me to have wealth. Okay, good, good. That, that, actually, that's that's a good point. That that actually is a very good point. Uh, uh, what what Jesus was saying is is if you have wealth now today, right? Uh, you're able to buy what you need. And remember, all this stuff is temporary. You're able to buy what you need. You can buy the best health care. You can buy all of this. You can buy the big cars. You can buy friendship for a while, right? But that's all temporary. That's, and I can't remember the psalm now, but there's, there's a psalm that talks about what, you need, what we need to be able to see is the end of those people, right? This is temporary. You got to look at the turn. This is the end of what happens to those people. Now, if they're saved, they are saved, 
and they will go to heaven. But they have got to go before this 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 judgment seat of Jesus to determine from now on and for this for this eternity what do you have? What are rewards for what you've done when you were alive? Eternity is a long is much longer than the times that we have with heaven today. So you, the, the point is, it's difficult for a wealthy person, to, in Jesus' analogy, it's difficult for a wealthy person to, 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 to determine, I need to be saved. I, you know, hey, I don't need to be saved. I can buy whatever I need, right? Uh, and, 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 and if I can deal with the guilt that, that, that I have, that, that I can, you know, I, 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 and you may not have you, but I can deal with all this so it, it's hard for you then now to tell to tell that person you need to you need to be saved you need to reach out to Jesus because this is all there is right. that's hard to see when what you see is all of this stuff in front of you it's hard for you to see the rest of it but it's hard for you to see the rest of it. So, and, so, and, and, and I'm, I'm starting a, 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 a series on the Holy Spirit this, this, this week. And one of, the, one of the ministries of the Holy Spirit is to constantly remind unbelievers that this is not all there is, right? Okay. And, and, and constant. Constant, constant the, the Holy Spirit never leaves an unbeliever alone. That's why I believers deal with guilt and deal with all these things because the, the Holy Spirit reminds them is this is not the end, guys. This is not all of it. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue to harass you as long as I can. You know, sooner or later, your mind gets seared, though. You, get, you, get, you can forget about it. But, but, the, but, the Holy, but the Holy Spirit never stops working on unbelievers. That's a, that's a ministry of the Holy Spirit. It's not just us. The Holy Spirit works on unbelievers. Did I answer you? Oh, okay. So, so, so in order for us to grow spiritually and protect ourselves from false teaching and the consequences, there are consequences, right, to it, Peter points out the consequences the one characteristic of these forces and their consequences. All right, what happens to them? Uh, 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 he clearly described their their their, their, their behavior. That's what we're going to talk about, and their condemnation, which is inevitable. So let's get to it. Uh, uh, let's write uh, Houston, Second Peter, chapter two. Verses 1 through 3. I've heard that. <clears throat> but there were also false prophets among the people, even as there will be false teachers among you, who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the Lord who bought them, and bring on themselves with destruction. And many will follow their destructive ways because the poor. The way of truth will be blasphemed by covetousness. They will exploit you with deceptive words. For a long time their judgment has not been idle, and their destruction does not suffer. All right? Okay, so it's inevitable. Both teachers inevitably, right, are going to be have received condemnation. So be careful about them because their heresies are destructive. Now, what, what's the main one that's in this? It's in, in the scripture. What's the main one? What's the main heresy the false teachers will try to get you to believe? Uh, right. Denying the sovereign Lord, right. Denying that. that. That's the main thing that false teaching will ultimately get to. It'll get there eventually. It, it, it will deny the sovereignty or the deity of God. Right? That's the main thing. So 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 Peter said Peter's warning them and us against 
for teachers, we've already said this, it's important for us to, to be grounded in the Word, right? Because that helps us to ward off, to deal with, to determine, to discern truth and error, right? Because you, you, you know, that's the only way you can stand firm in faith in a world that's filled with deception. Not only do we have teachers in the coming church, but the whole of this world is deceptive. So the only way you can stand firm is Peter challenging them to be discerning, and the way to be discerning is through the word of God. Now, he's, Peter draw, was going to draw. Remember, now, all these people have at this point is the Old Testament so, and the prophets. Okay, so for, for Peter's going to draw a parallel uh, between the false prophets. Don't let me say this. False prophets didn't begin with the church. Did not begin with Christianity. False prophets, there were false prophets uh, uh, from the beginning of time, right? And so for Peter wants to draw a parallel between the false prophets of the Old Testament and the false teachers of his day or, or our day, right? Okay, and and uh, the deception that, that there's a there's a there's a there's a deception has certain things that always exist, right? And 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 doesn't matter whether it was Old Testament times or our times. Uh, uh, so 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 what Peter wants Peter's warning them, saying to them, is there are false teachers in the Christian community. And that is a fact today. There are false teachers in the community today, and we will have them until Jesus returns. So be careful. Remember, beware, we grow. But yes, Susan. Oh, wow. I'm talking a lot, but it's the truth. Back in the day, I was studying the Bible after coming out of a program and uh, this man was going home, and I stopped, and he said to give him a ride. Okay, well, I gave him a ride. Make a long story short. This man had on a black, shiny Napoleon hat. <laughs> you know how Napoleon had a, he had one on? He had a long, black, like, dress card, uh -huh. and he had a Bible in his hat. Okay. And we get in the car and we're talking. And he's telling me about his belief and don't believe this. And he was telling me in the Bible. And he contradicted everything that I was saying. When I got home, the gospel section I was listening to, and this is the truth. As soon as I turned the radio on, the man said, Beware of a man wearing a Napoleon hat, <laughs> claiming to be the lion on the top, and he had a lion on his back. He wasn't a man of the, to be a lion on top of that. He is out there, he just bought him. Okay, but, and, and, but that's obvious. That, yeah. no. That, that's pretty obvious. However, that's that, that, that's pretty obvious. Yeah. That's pretty obvious, and you can identify those by people, right? Yeah. The, the, but, 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 but when I'm talking the talking the people that really are dangerous, those people are not that dangerous. I can spot them, right? The people that are really dangerous are subtle, oh, right, and insidious in the in the spreading of their doctrine because their what they teach seems plausible it makes sense because there's always some truth in it right and it seems like this makes it for example taking your thing uh uh if god didn't want me to have this 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 million dollar house i wouldn't have it that makes sense yes <laughs> right okay but but if, if, if you continue to follow the reasoning along the line what happens because it, it's subtle right and and you end up end up seeing seeing, seeing a person a, a person that's deceitful and they will begin to in, in, they will they will begin to introduce some destructive heritages because it contradicts the, the teaching of Christ. Um, and it, it, it is it possible that um, 
They would be. They would profess to be Christians also. Absolutely, 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 absolutely. absolutely. Um, last story. Okay. Um, are you familiar with Benny Hinn? Yes. Um, he came to the University of Miami, and um, and I was assigned um, to, to the detail. And um, he comes in, and you would think it was the president of the United States. He's got so he comes in as a big black SUV, and they they he has his security people that crowd around him. Um, similar to the way the Secret Service did with um, with um, Donald Trump, and they rush him into the building, and um, you know into a you know dressing room, and then he has security outside the dressing room, and um, and he gets on stage, and he says, "Everyone with a uh, five thousand dollar check, come up and put your money on the stage." And these people lined up, and you know, and he says, "All right." Um, thousand dollar checks come up and bring your you know and it got he goes down and he condemns everyone who's not donating at least five hundred dollars. Condemning and they had a money room off to the side with um like you see from the like Scarface movies where they're just counting money and just like bring wow. money. And um and you know they, these poor people were searching for uh, spiritual guidance. Yeah. And, um, you know, and they're being, um, you know, just milk dry. And these are people, you know, um, like common folk that, that um, you know, uh, may have difficulty coming up with $500. Mm-hmm. And he condemns these people, you know. And that, that was, um, you know, really, uh, you know, hard to watch. Yeah. Um, but isn't that where the comes in? Yeah, right. But you need right. That's why that's 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 why it's important. That's why it's important to grow and study so you can discern. So, so you can discern discern uh, 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 whether that is 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 from God something you want to do or not. Now, what what I will say is is that is that uh, if 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 you if if Benny Hinn, let's all use as an example. If he came and you and you you did that and you went and went into that, what I can tell you is that the, you, you got to be able to you discern everything. Something for a lot of what Benny Hinn says, says is true and honest and real, right? So we really so so your discernment. If your discernment comes in an offering, it just depends. You got when you have discernment and understanding, you need to know what to take and what you know. You can determine what's true. And what is error? Uh, I, I know a lot of these people were were desperate for if, right. healing and well, you know, and, and, uh, yeah, that's know, what it is. One of the things in, this, in the scripture that was read uh, in the, the very in in in, uh, in verse one to three, one of the things that indicated was the, the and, and we've talked about this before. The reason a person is a false why do do people do this? Greed, greed, right. The reason, the reason you have false teeth, people do it for for greed or self, you know, selfish, selfish reasons. So that and that needs to be a part of what you need to, to understand. But 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 uh, uh, let he, he here is uh, what I want to get to is where they what it, what ends up happening. To the city, first, you know, first Peter, Peter warned believers to be discerning, right? He warns to be discerning and hold fast to the truth. Uh, to, it's important that to hold fast to sound doctrine uh, and the need for spiritual maturity, all right? Because there's false teachers that exist and have always existed, right? Or if you read the Old Testament, there was false prophets in the Old Testament. Uh, there are false prophets today. Uh, uh, Houston, we were just talked about one earlier today, talking about uh, yeah. Balaam and Balak, it's, and I can't remember what 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 birth, that's a numbers, I believe. Okay, numbers. Uh, that that's an example of a false teacher, false prophet. Now, and so, so the the thing to remember about that Houston, by the way, is that God did speak to him, right? And he in in the end ended up listening to God. Said, I can't I can't curse these people because God says. 
He got a blessing. But he was a false prophet because he ended up deceiving them anyway. So, all right, so... So, so here, 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 here is what happens to them. So, if you read Second Peter chapter two, verses four through nine. For if, for if, for if God did not even spare angels that sin, but drew them into hell and sent them to pits of gloom to be kept there for judgment, and if he did not spare the ancient world but protected Noah, a preacher of righteousness, with seven others when he brought the judgment of a flood upon the world of the ungodly, and if he condemned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah to to destruction by reducing them to ashes, having made them an example to those who would live ungodly lives thereafter, and if he rescued righteous Lot, who was tormented by the immoral conduct of unprincipled and ungodly men, that just man, while living among them, felt his righteous soul tormented day after day by what he saw and heard of their lawless acts. Then, in light of the fact that all this is true, be sure that the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from trial and how to keep the unrighteous under punishment until the day of judgment. Okay, so so what Peter, Peter remember now? Remember all, all all these people had at this point in time was the Old Testament in that record, right? Yeah. So what Peter is Peter is 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 you is using history to remind them of the judgment of sin. To remind them that God's going to judge sin. Uh, right? I hear something. Yeah, it may be. Yeah, it may be Mr. Duncan. The, the, to, to, to remind, to remind, or, or it may be the, somebody water guy. Anyway, to, to, uh, Peter, Peter is reinforcing how how horrible, how grave these guys' actions uh, result in, right? Mm-hmm. And uh huh. No, I was just thinking when you said how. Of their action, he said, "How he was on Oh yes. <laughs> All right. So, so what we're what doing now is reinforcing the reinforcing yeah. the warning yeah. about falsehood by drawing a by drawing parallels between their actions, historical example. Right. Peter's using historical events to underscore how grave. The, the, the actions of these people are. And at the same time, are showing the believer of God's ultimate deliverance. Okay, the, what do you say about, you know, you're talking, you're talking about Sodom, Sodom and Gomorrah, what do you say? Right? What did it say? Lot was delivered, right? So God has the ability, God has the ability to judge. And, and judge, but, but and at the same time, the ability to deliver is true. So, so, so even though we have to deal with false teachers, what Peter's saying, look, here's what's going to happen. They're going to be judged, and 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 that that end is not going to be a great end. But God has, at the same time, the ability to deliver you. So you stay the course. You continue to grow. You continue to be able to, to discern good from evil because God can deliver you, mm-hmm. right? Uh, uh, and so, 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 so he, he used some examples. Uh, he emphasized that 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 that, uh, uh, that he talked about the flood, right? He talked about the flood. God destroyed everybody. However, He delivered Noah and his family, mm-hmm. right? And the Sodom and Gomorrah is the other example. He destroyed those cities, but he delivered a uh, lot, right? Re- reinforces this the theme of judgment on sin and deliverance to the righteous, right? So the, the theme you see out of all these examples that he gave that was, is that God's protection for the righteous and judgment on the unrighteous. Okay, so that, that's what's going to happen. If your if your false false teachers are going to receive judgment, 
You at the same time, if you maintain yourself, right, and able to discern error from uh, 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 truth from error, you will be delivered. God can do that. God can take care of them, and you at the same can take care of them in judgment and take care of you at the same time. Okay, so if these false teachers do they um, keep judging? Will they be able to be forgiven for what they've taught, trying to teach other people? God can forgive anything. Yes. Okay. Yeah. The answer to your question is yes. God can. For, there's nothing. There's only one sin that God cannot and will not forgive, uh, and that is is when, if you die, right? Not ever trusting in in his his in, in his in his son, right? Everything else can be forgiven. Yes. That being the Holy Spirit. You cannot bless him, the Holy Spirit, until you die. Right, right, right. Okay, okay. You, what, what, so what, what, what you've done is you've discounted okay. Jesus, right? Right, yeah. right. Yes. But then you see what these prophets, uh, false prophets, do to people. How they conjure them in, get them false and so that they will be healed. And then they, you know, and then they, you know, study sending their money to them because they think they're going to be healed, and they never be, you know, they be healed. What's the solution? Yeah. Solution is that is discern. If you need to discern, need to that's why you, that, 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 that's, that, that the key to all of this, the key to not being duped, is having understanding. And the only way you can understanding and knowledge, and the only way you can get that is through study of God's word, through the development of the virtues, right, and study of God's word. That, that keeps you from being duped because you, you, need, you need to be able to figure out you need to be able. You need to be able. And and you think you really can't figure that out? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Really? Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. You, you, you got to. You got to. The sermon doesn't. Well, let me put it this way. No. Well, let me put it. Maybe okay. maybe answer that question. Discerning doesn't start when you have problems. Yeah. Knowledge doesn't start. When you have problems, you need to know something before you get there. Right? So when you get there, now what we already know, we already know that this world is evil. We already know we're going to have problems. We're going to have people. We already know that, right? Mm -hmm. So, and but we also know from the Word of God that God has provided one; He's going to never leave you or forsake you, and He has provided. A, 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 a blueprint, a roadmap, whatever we want to call it, to help you get through that. But you got to do that before. Now, it'll, it'll help. It'll help once you're there. It'll help you get through, right? But your point is that if you're really sick, it's hard for you to read. You know, it's hard for you to sit down and take the time to read. So you need to know something beforehand. Knowledge doesn't come, knowledge comes before the event. We already know, you already know the event. Yes, sir. It's something I, I don't know, and I probably should. On TV, you see the pastor going down the line, touching them in a forum. Okay. Is that fake or not? Well, let, let, I, I'm, I'm going give, I'm, I'm to give you an opinion, okay? Now, you, 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 what do you want to say? I'm going to give you my opinion based on Scripture. Okay. My opinion based on Scripture. Do you remember when? Do you remember when Jesus was confronted by the soldiers in the garden? Yeah. Right? And he identified himself. Uh, as Jesus. Right. Which way did they fall? Oh, backwards. What? Backwards. Which way did they fall? Okay. Right. Yeah. They fell. Yeah. Fall. Yeah, they fell. Oh, oh, they fell. Yeah. Right. Right. Now. Now. So. Now. Where the? Oh, okay. All right. Now. Wow. Okay. So. 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 In my opinion. Okay. Come on, right. Right. In my opinion. If if it's, if God, if you lay hands on someone and they fall backwards, Whoa. right? Doesn't mean it doesn't mean that it wasn't affected that that they were affected by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, in my opinion, did not cause them to fall back. Okay. Oh, okay. If I'm going to worship you, okay. 
Well, if I worship, I don't worship by going back. Right? I worship by bowing down. That's what worship is. Worship is bowing. That's, that's just an opinion. That's, that's my opinion based on what I've read. Okay. Well, you can. You can fake. Yeah, you can. You can. You can. You can, you can fake anything. You can fake anything. Fake anything, but what are we studying about? We're studying the ability of being able to discern truth from error. Right? Now, uh, let, let me let me say this, and we, we're not going to finish this because we have too many questions. But let, 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 let me say this. Let me say this too. We need to study to be able to discern truth from error, right? And all of us could do this. There is there is a spiritual gift of discernment, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a spiritual gift you read about, it. and that 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 allows you to to discern some other stuff, some 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 deeper stuff. But but the stuff we're talking about today is is uh, you if you study and you study scripture, uh, discern. Well, here's what I don't want us to do. I don't want us to say, right, that that. If, if so lay, someone lays hands on somebody and they fall backward, that is all fake. It's not necessary. No, not necessary. Just like Lee, just like just like Duel was saying, if 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 so, people fall down to worship, people can pretend yeah. to worship. So we need to be now in order to be real honest, in order for you to determine whether that's fake or not, you really need the spirit of discernment. You the spiritual gift because you can't Hell, otherwise, you know, people can act. You got to have good actors, but you need to be able to discern. You need the Holy Spirit then needs to let you know whether that's who Yes. I've never seen one fall forward on TV. Right. After, after, and no, fall back. Well, well, let me let me tell you what. Let me tell you again. This is no opinion, <laughs> right? This, this is this, right. This is my opinion. You know, I've seen people just drop. Down, I have, you know, uh, and and that that also would be something. But but this is my opinion. Thank God for that, though. My opinion. This is my opinion. If you were raised in the church and you see people when they go up for prayer, and you see people fall back when the hands are laid on them, then you think. That's what's supposed to happen, right? Some of that is right. I was suggesting example, and and it's real example. There have been crusades where a an, an evangelist does something like waving their hand, and everybody in the crowd. Falls down. What happened? Now, now, now. But if you read, if you read, it's like psychology and all the kinds of. There is, there is that that something that can happen, right? Because that happens doesn't does not mean though. It does not mean that that the power of the Holy Spirit did not cause that to happen, right? And that some people it happened to some people, but maybe not everybody. This is it's discern. That's why it's important to discern. So I never discount. I never ever discount anything that I see because God and the Holy Spirit are able to do anything. And what I pray for is discernment to know whether I this is something I really should take note of. Right. And, and and your anchor for all of this, your anchor for all of this is the word of God. If if it doesn't conflict with the, with the word of God, it may be true. If it if it's in direct conflict, then it's not true. Okay? It, it there's a lot of stuff that's not in not in the Bible. The words are not in the Bible, but principles are there. For example, the Bible doesn't doesn't say that you should not smoke. 
The Bible never says that. But the Bible says is that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. You need to take care of it. Mm-hmm. But if you know then that tobacco, tobacco smoke mm-hmm. affects you physically, then you should not smoke. Right? The, the Bible doesn't say that. The Bible, the Bible does not tell you who you should marry. The Bible does not tell you that. The Bible, as a matter of fact, I read something here recently that says, <laughs> if you read the Bible, you can conclude that God has several people in mind for you to marry. Oh. Here's the answer to that. Here's the answer to that. The Bible gives you principles of things you should have, you should see in a mate. Uh. Right? And a lot of people have those characteristics, not just one. Right, so so what, that's what I'm saying is you need discernment. And you need to understand if it and, and if it does not conflict with the Bible, go with it until it comes in direct conflict. We're out of time. We did not get wow. far at all. <laughs> okay, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to take up with well, we got we got almost halfway through uh, chapter two. Uh, but uh, we'll, so we'll we'll take that we'll start uh, start with that we'll maybe start at uh, uh, verse ten of, of of chapter two next next time. Any questions comments? Oh well, we're about to pray. My comment is, is pray God, thank God, and I believe it's because of answer prayer in in Israel they have. Fell back from trying to destroy Israel. Well, that might be a trick, but I believe that prayer is of the same. That's what because they haven't did it yet. They haven't tried to destroy them from every area and just wipe them off the map. They said yesterday that Hamas and the other ones that want to destroy them are, are thinking. Taking second thoughts about it. So yeah, I, well, you are, well, prayer, prayer every day obviously is important. Because remember, one, 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 one thing I said was said was prevailing uh, prayer uh, when when people of God pray, it it can change the world. That's the, wow. uh, uh, but but so remember that, that that's true. So prayer is probably true. I I would what 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 I would what I would urge you to do though. In this instance, is to to and, and I've said this before, Houston. I want to say this again. Don't take don't take specific incidences one at a time because what it'll do it will confuse you. Okay. So, but if, uh, when 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 Iran sent all of them drones, you're in your opinion just about to go down, right? Uh, yeah. Now today, it's still so. So don't take don't take yeah. a, a, a one incident and say. That this we're taking yeah, look yeah. look that's that's why whole the, we need this point we need to study we need to study the whole of scripture okay. to try to determine where we are and 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 to try to figure out the end Jesus already told you 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 can't do that <laughs> right right so and uh, any other questions or comments anybody. I'm sorry we didn't get as far as we we, we wanted, but I'm, I'm glad we had we had a chance to discuss some things. Well, because, I think that's more important than getting you know to where you want to be. <laughs> <laughs> and we're being enlightened, Pastor Jacob. So don't be disappointed and don't be sorry about that because we're learning a lot of things. Yeah. You know, oh. that's better to do that than oh we're in the next chapter. We, <laughs> Okay. You know, you know, okay. Oh, okay. Well, one, 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 and I, 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 this probably shows. But one of one of my passions is against false teaching and false doctrine. I'm very passionate about that. So, so. I would. No, I, I have a question because I, you know, when you invite people, I invite people to church, right? And they'll say, um, "Well, I don't really need to." go into the church because I believe in God and I pray. Yeah. But then I, then I tell them, I said, well, maybe you need to come in just to worship with mm-hmm. the people in church 
Oh, I don't need to do that. So, worship and fellowship. Right, right, right. It, That's what you're trying to tell me. Yeah. <laughs> You, you can you can worship alone, right? Okay. Scripture never says you have to go to church. What it says is don't neglect the gathering yourself together so that you can encourage oh. each other. And then as we said earlier today, if you're going through something, right, we're not yeah. alone. God didn't create us to be. If, if He created us to be alone, He would have just created Adam, and that was it, right? <laughs> right? But, but, but He said Adam needed somebody to help, right? But we need yeah. we need each other. Right. We need we really do need each other. We need each other, especially when we're going through stuff. Yeah. We need each other. The one the one to realize I'm not the only one that's going through this, right? Yeah. Or, and and they went through it. How did they do it? And then we're encouraging them. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Okay. That's good. You know, yeah. Like, um, my brother um, was uh, spent a lot of time incarcerated. And um, and he had to learn a lot by himself, you know. And um, what the problem was that um, a lot of things he was left to interpret on his own. I, you know, I hear these scriptures, and, and until um, someone explains the meaning of them, you know, I'm I, I'm, I'm I'm clueless. Right. You know, and, exactly. And he was. You know, he, he was without that, and, you know, he was left to interpret by himself, and, you know, and I think he, you know, he, he struggled there. He was a, a, a believer, you yeah. know, became, you know, Jehovah's Witness, but, but um, you know, he, he just, um, you know, did it um, mainly, you know, by himself, you know, and even the smartest man, you know, I, you know, and it, especially um, looking at, say, um, the Old Testament and like King James Version, you know, I'm, you know, I, I, I can't see it. Yeah, I, well, that's true. So, some of the stuff you read, if you read it, um, uh, some of the stuff doesn't make a lot of sense, right? If you're just looking at it without any discernment of the Holy Spirit, this does not make sense. Like, for example, when the, 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 the book, now, for, for us, a sinless person dying for a people makes a lot of sense. But for somebody, unless you understand the reason for it, it doesn't make sense. Right. That doesn't make sense. for. I mean, e- even though you would do it for family, people would do it for family. People would you know, suffer for family, right? But for somebody who that you don't know, right, why would wow. you suffer for them, right? Wow. I have never done this. So it doesn't make sense, right? Until you really understand it more than the guidance of the Holy Spirit and other people, then you can understand that fact. Because you think, well, God, God, that don't make sense for God to do that. So, right? But then until you understand that God is not only is is God merciful, God is also just. If He said the way to sin is death. That means somebody has to die in order for God to be just, right? But then because he is merciful, he sent his son Jesus to take the penalty that that we justly deserve. All right? Let's let's, let's quit. Let's let's, let's, let's stop. Okay. Uh, Any any prayer requests? Any specific prayer requests? 